Oh, I grew up loving cartoons. I still love cartoons. I just used to too. That is so funny. And why don't you fucking laugh? If it's that fucking funny, then start laughing. How'd I do? Pretty good, right? When I was a preteen and teenager in the 2000s, there was a huge cartoon influx on the internet. This was the era of Flash cartoons, so-called because Adobe Flash was the initial software used by most of these animators. And the veritable empire site for Flash cartoons was Newgrounds. It was the golden age of online animation, and we are here today to talk about one of the most important figures of this golden age, and the ages that have since succeeded it. I'm talking about animation genius David Firth. David Firth has been on the internet for about 20 years and has made hundreds of videos, some of which are lost to the internet. A master of comedy, satire, horror, the surreal, the macabre, especially the macabre, the tones in Firth's work are as diverse and impressive as his animation styles have been over the years. But the one word I would use to describe all of his work is weird. David Firth's stuff is really weird, and it's unique, and it's never really been duplicated. Nearly everything the man has done has made some sort of impact on me. His work never seems to fall flat, it always hits me somewhere. Whether it's my funny bone, or the hair on the back of my neck. And despite the fact that he has produced work that has been analyzed, that has been given acclaim and accolades and has been watched by millions of people, I don't think many review videos have been made of his work as a whole. There have been interviews, some of them really good. There have been reviews of specific videos, some of them really good. There's an iceberg video, there are hundreds of reddit threads dedicated to his most popular work, but there aren't many videos that are just trying to sell you on him. Or any that are straight up love letters to his stuff. And there should be. He's earned that. So that's what I'd like to do here. I want to give the man his dues. So put on your sock, rub your rusty spoons, and get ready for a long vacation to Luxembourg. This is my love letter to the weird work of David Firth. It's hard to tackle Firth's style as a whole, because his style changes radically based on which of his series or shorts you're looking at. He's created horror, comedy, and surrealist work, and if you didn't know any better, you might not know some of this stuff comes from the same guy. His horror and surreal stuff tends to be very evocative, with a lot of focus on atmosphere. There's a ton of variety in his comedy, ranging from shock humor and violent slapstick to genuinely intelligent satire. Despite the variety in his work, something that is consistent throughout is his attention to detail. His animation is top-notch for each era his videos were released in, and when they're bad, it's always on purpose. In his interview with Bing, he breaks down his creative process, which involves lots of incomplete storyboards, from which he selects the ones that are complete enough to devote time to animating. He does around 50 vocal takes before making a selection, strolls through forests and abandoned buildings to get his background palettes just right, and often balances multiple projects at once, each in a different phase of completion. So just about everything he's done creates some kind of mood. But these moods are wildly different, so I'm going to try and break it down series by series and video by video. Let's start in the beginning. Firth's origins lay on Newgrounds, of course, but also on his own website, Fat Pie, which still exists to this day. In the mid-2000s, he had a lot of short, chaotic cartoons, stop-motion animations, homemade Aphex Twin music videos, and his own music under the name Locust Toybox. As a matter of fact, Firth does most of the music in his videos, and Locust Toybox still exists. His earliest stuff is hard to find, and when you do find it, it's not great. I know I just said nearly everything he's ever done has made me emote, but the key word in the cases of these videos is nearly. I mean, the guy was a kid when he was making stuff like Panathinaikos Bear. He was just starting out, and I think he has tried to hide a lot of his pre-July 2004 stuff. But that's only because what did happen in July of 2004 changed everything. Firth released the first episode of Salad Fingers. This is the video that kickstarted his career as a cartoonist. Salad Fingers is an ambient horror series, and sometimes comedy series, about a strange creature named Salad Fingers, who has a penchant for rubbing rusty spoons and other items. Salad Fingers' world is a barren, empty wasteland where he lives all alone, but he does seem to have some neighbors. Salad Fingers himself is a well-meaning soul, but he comes off as someone who's been alone his entire life and doesn't seem to know what death is. 
He actually prefers the company of dead bodies. In an interview with Unilad, Firth mentioned that Salad Fingers was partially inspired by Michael Jackson. And this is funny because he is very Michael Jackson-esque. That, that little boy that has been watching me for a while now. Some episodes feel like you're observing things from a removed standpoint, while others feel like you're seeing things through his demented mind. The horror in the series really comes from the world Salad Fingers lives in. His world is rarely consistent. You never know what sort of wild shit will happen next. And when I say that the series is sometimes a comedy series, I mean it. Salad Fingers has some genuinely funny moments, like when Salad Fingers gets mad at a pole for not having any rust on it, or when he finds two horses playing seven minutes in heaven inside of his closet, or most recently when he falls in love with a dead rotting dog carcass. It's genuinely sad at times too, with some episodes ending with Salad Fingers completely losing his mind and crying all alone. The animation and the show itself have gotten better and better with each episode, with Firth having devoted an entire year to episode 11, which is my personal favorite so far. On a side note, Salad Fingers 12 was released while I was writing the script for this, and though I stand by my statement that 11 is my favorite episode, 12 is great and is probably the funniest one so far. And I think that's the staying power of the series. Despite the disturbing stuff we see on screen, it makes us laugh. We can't help but laugh at a lot of it, even if it's a nervous laugh. This really makes Salad Fingers what it is, and I think that this buoyancy between the horror and the comedy went a long way in making it popular. It's consistently inconsistent, and Salad Fingers himself is consistently consistent. For as little as we know about him, he's definitely a developed character. While watching episode 12, I thought to myself, of course Salad Fingers would fall in love with a dead dog. Of course. He's Salad Fingers. What's strange about Salad Fingers is that despite being this strange, surreal, unpredictable horror series, it became a massive hit. It is, by far, Firth's most well-known creation, and the character has become a cultural icon. It's one of the most watched series in the history of Newgrounds and has spawned a crazy amount of merchandise. I actually remember my first year in college, I saw a guy wearing a Salad Fingers shirt and it was the first time I'd ever seen someone wearing merchandise from a Flash series. I just remember thinking, holy shit, this is something. And for a web series that's nearly 20 years old to be getting better instead of worse is a testament to how much respect he has for this creation that brought him so much. Another long-running series of Firths that really hones in on the surreal is Sock. Firth developed each episode of Sock out of dreams he's had, and each episode has no connection to any other aside from that feature. There are elements of horror in Sock, but the series is more this haunting, dreamy, flowy concept. The episodes barely have any sort of plot, and yet each episode is an enormous milestone in animation compared to the last, with Sock 5 being one of the biggest leaps forward for Firth's cutout imitation style, and Sock 6 probably having the best animation of anything he's done so far. I mean, look at this! Fuck! You shouldn't be looking at stuff like that. If we're going to talk about times Firth has pushed the envelope, we'd be remiss not to mention the almost infamous Spoilsbury Toast Boy. This series, in which children are enslaved, mind-controlled, and experimented on by beetles, remains the most absolutely horrifying work Firth has created to date. The second one in particular is genuinely one of the most fucked up Flash videos I've ever seen and involves several things being done to a grandma that you shouldn't do to a grandma. In his interview with Unilad, Firth has even mentioned that the reason he discontinued the series was because he felt that he had gone too far. David Firth thought that he had gone too far. Firth may be known for his horror and surreal stuff, but his comedy is absolutely hilarious. He's made several comedy series. Face man. Yes. You've dropped your gay card. Hmm. Oh, let's have a look. Where, where could that thing be? Ha ha ha, he looked. That means he's gay. Burt Face Man is a useless superhero who everyone hates. His fights with his enemies generally involve them hurling insults at each other and acting like children. 
His episodes always seem to end on unresolved cliffhangers. It's kind of hilarious how much people hate him, and he kind of deserves it. This man must burn him even more. I burn you more. I burn you penis. I burn you balls. Jerry Jackson is an amateur filmmaker who barely has any grasp of the English language, whether spoken or written. He oftentimes doesn't know when he's being rude to other people, and he's kind of obnoxious. Jules is acidic, but the pop is alkaline. That is the main difference between the two. Experiments. Take two Jews and mix it with a pop and a half and then dip in your special litmus strip and see what the colour is. If it's green, then that means that John's mum is pregnant again. Er, uh, no. John's mum shouldn't be called Miss John. She should be called Miss Carriage, because that is what she is always having. Jerry, I think we need to have a little discussion about that joke. Okay, John, what is the problem? I don't get it. This series is so bad on purpose that if you didn't know any better, you'd still know it was bad on purpose. Nobody has ever misspelled this many words. I wouldn't recommend marathoning Jerry Jackson. Your brain would melt. Treat yourself to Jerry Jackson once in a while. If you only have time to watch one Jerry Jackson video, watch the one about religion or political correctness. He reviewed Salad Fingers once too. That was kind of funny. Believe it or not, the BBC once commissioned Firth to make animations for their website, and he gave them Jerry Jackson. Yes, David Firth got commissioned money for Jerry Jackson. She said, are you a serial killer? I said, no, I'm not a fucking serial killer. I said, I ain't no serial killer. I killed a bunch of people, but there were one-offs. There was no series. Not Stanley is a series narrated in a monologue that almost sounds like a stand-up routine. It's animated very similarly to Angela Anaconda. Stanley, or I guess it's not Stanley, is a loudmouthed Philly guy, no seriously, look, that's Philadelphia, who gets in arguments with his mom and tells it like it is. Ah, oh, drillbit head, I almost forgot about the series that Firth made for the BBC because most of the episodes are hard to find. Each episode begins with someone asking drillbit head, do these buildings still argue? This prompts drillbit head to tell a story that in no way answers that question. The series is full of fun, Mitch Hedberg-style plays on words, just fleshed out in an animation. Why are we ignoring the fact that Andrew Talvin is a serial sex offender? I abused 99 women, but uh, they enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. You, you were sexually assaulted by Andrew Talvin? No. The News Hasn't Happened Yet is one of my favorites. A hilarious series about how news isn't real, each episode of the series left me feeling like, well, as if I just watched the news. Seriously, this was barely any different than watching the news. It's just as if he animated what I personally hear and see when the news is on. Some of tonight's news was entirely untrue. But what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Um, I'll probably go to bed and then I'll get up tomorrow and I'll have breakfast. Um, well, I might take a few selfies, and then just have a little cry. Murdering. I'll go out murdering. Health Reminder was a short-lived comedy series that is another one of my favorites. A doctor is convincing people that they're sick when they're not, and giving sick people medicine that does absolutely nothing. It's an absolutely biting satire of the pharmaceutical industry that's more relevant now than it's ever been. Will just die any minute? Um, what, what happens when I die? First we take our plasters back. Then we slap you for wasting our time. Only living people are of use to us. Then finally, with your permission, we'll donate your still warm body to a rapist. Ugh. I know it sounds vile, but if we can convince one rapist to come in off the streets and spare potential living victims, then we are healing the community together. The World Within a Sock, not to be confused with sock, is about advertising and it's so prophetic, it's actually eerie. Psst. We've got an update. Phase two. Conversation. Association. Integrated. Adverts. What's that, James? Every conversation you have will be monitored, and an appropriate advert will be chosen based on the subject matter. By the way, that clip came out in 2008. 2008. To illustrate how ahead of its time that clip is, 
Back in 2008, you could probably still find the Bud Dwyer suicide video somewhere on YouTube. And this is real now. I want to laugh, but at the same time, it kind of bothers me how right this has become. Especially the third one. My god, I practically grew up to become this kid. The news, health reminder, and the world within a sock may have been magnified versions of things that were actually happening when they were released, but they've since aged into being nearly 100% real. Just you wait, in 10 years, they'll donate your still warm body to a rapist, see if they don't. Now, so far, I've spoken about Firth's series, but these series, which include some of his most famous work, is actually not the main bulk of his work. The majority of Firth's work is his one-off stuff, and this stuff falls into all sorts of different genres, so I'm gonna try and cover the ones that have made an impact on me the most. Which is almost all of them, I mean this is David fucking Firth we're talking about. Video Dating Tape, Milkman, and the Valentine's Day Special are all good mixes of shock horror and comedy. I don't have too much to say about them, except they're all good. Dog of Man leans a little more into the horror realm. A video about a dog doing everything he can to help a man, this one has a pretty shocking ending. In the latest model, owning a nuclear warhead is the newest fad, but when an angry kid sets his off, he ruins it for everyone. In a short cartoon about time, time is for sale. People are buying and selling time like it's nothing, winding the clock back or selling the best years of their lives to pay the bills. I'd like to point out that this video predates the film in time by a couple years, so... They might owe Firth some royalties. In The Child That Smelt Funny, one kid getting burned to death sparks a giant movement to ban all forms of entertainment in order to create a safer world. As you can imagine, this turns out to be a terrible idea. Men From Up The Stairs is funny enough on its own if you don't really know the meaning behind it, but once you discover what it's actually about, it becomes ingenious. I don't want to spoil this one, so all I can say is if you haven't seen it, Watch it first, see if you can figure it out, then watch it again after you do. It's even better. Adventures of Music Mouth is proof that David Firth is one of the only human beings on Earth that can make puns funny. Firth has also made some stop motion videos. One of them, Crooked Rot, is genuinely one of the most unnerving things he's made. I think mannequins are creepy, and interesting. I think that they are criminally underused in horror media. It's pretty clear that Crooked Rot was inspired by Jan Svenkmeyer, and it's really well done. I'd Like To Be is really good too. I love the music in this one. Ah, uh, Pulch. Pulch was my favorite Firth cartoon for a really long time. And I think it's because it has a nice, peaceful vibe to it, which is something you rarely hear about his creations. It's about a tree that has a calming effect on all who go near it. And the video itself actually has a calming effect on me whenever I watch it. I would like to invite you all to join me in a rug of gin. Let's make a toast to Mother Nature and healthy living. How are everyone's bowels doing? Good. Good. Very good. And a toast to good bowels. The ending is a little sad. I mean, all good times must come to an end, right? But this is still one of my favorite things he's ever made. And then, of course, there's cream. Cream. The miracle substance that can make ugly people pretty, stupid people smart, bad people good, dead people alive, broken machinery fixed, broken anything fixed, that can turn humans into beings of pure light energy, that can end pollution and world hunger. And the best part is, if cream has made your life perfect and you get bored, you can rub more cream on yourself and your enthusiasm comes back. And in most of Firth's videos, there would be a catch, some drawback, that fatal flaw. Hell, even the inventor of cream seems insincere at first, like the doctor from Health Reminder or the spokesman from a short cartoon about time. Because that's the way it always goes in David Firth's videos. These characters always have some ulterior motive. But as it goes on, and Cream starts healing every problem in the world, you begin to realize that Cream doesn't have any drawbacks. 
There is no catch. Cream is genuine. It's a miracle substance. It can save us from every pain there is. It even eliminates the necessity of money. And in the end, that's what does it in. Halfway through the video, we cut to a man standing in the office of his mansion, talking into his cell phone, and the single word he says is no. Next thing you know, the media is telling us that cream causes AIDS, that it's made from dead babies, that the inventor is a rapist. We're getting that you wouldn't steal a car piracy bullshit they used to have on DVDs, but it's about duplicating food to feed starving people, and then someone ripping that duplicated food out of a starving African child's hands. Like Pulch, Cream hit me differently. Like a lot of other works by Firth, it made me laugh. In some ways, it is horrifying, and like a lot of his satirical stuff, it is poignant. But Cream also did something else. It made me sad. And not sad like the ending of Pulch or some episodes of Salad Fingers, but realistically sad. Because if this impossible substance ever did exist, this is exactly what would fucking happen. Never mind that these rich status quo fuckwads could cream themselves more money, or cream themselves into not caring about money. This shit would still happen. Because that's human nature. David Firth's take on this topic reflects my take on this topic. Greed is one of the natural orders of humanity and can't be fixed, even by cream. Cream is my favorite David Firth video so far. And given how massively popular this video has become, I'm sure I'm not alone. Cream really resonated with people. I feel like I should also mention Umbilical World, Firth's feature-length film. I hate to admit this, but I have not seen this yet, but I would like to someday. It seems to be a movie made from some of his old stuff and some new stuff pieced together into a full movie. If any of you have seen it, let me know how you liked it in the comments below. I should also mention The Meadow Man, a feature-length film composed of entirely new material that David Firth has been working on for years now. He has brought it up and talked about it, but the fans keep begging and the setbacks keep happening. In his interview with Bing, he said if it ever does get finished, it will probably be the best thing he's ever done. Which is, you know, only the biggest fucking tease ever. Will we ever see the Meadow Man? Maybe. Maybe not. But I certainly don't mind what Firth is giving us in the meantime. So where is David Firth now? Well, he's still on the internet. He ain't leaving that place anytime soon. And still relevant. He continues to make at least one big video a year, and several smaller ones. A couple of years ago, he made a commercial for Patreon. He also created a really good ad for his own Patreon, explaining why it's the perfect place for an artist like him. He became one of the many talented online animators who had a cameo on Smiling Friends. Unlike many animators, David Firth is very open to interviews and is not afraid of putting his face out there. He's been the subject of many interviews, written and video, Though I think his best one is the Heroes of Animation video by Bing. Inviting an interviewer to an abandoned building was pretty hilarious and reminded me of the Red Man episode of MTV Cribs. So, in case you couldn't tell, I fucking love David Firth. The man isn't just an artist, he's an artiste. He's been around since the old internet and hasn't changed one bit, hasn't stopped being edgy or funny or offbeat or weird one bit. The man has not ever lost his luster, it just keeps shining brighter and brighter. He's both genius and ingenious, and both things shine through in his work. Weird work that I hope will continue for as long as there are ideas in his head. He will forever have a hollowed place in the hall of good internet. Guys, thanks for watching my first foray into internet media. Have any favorite David Firth videos? Have any of you seen Umbilical World? Will Firth ever make The Meadow Man? Answer me some of these questions in the comments, and be sure to like and subscribe. Down below I have links to my Patreon, Firth's Patreon, FatPie.com, and Bing's and Unilad's interviews with David Firth. This is The Plebe, signing out. The Plebe Films, uh...